Canadian Campaholic here coming to you live from our rather untidy basement. It's late January now and we're uh, about halfway through the dreary dark days of winter, but the 2019 camping season is approaching. We've already booked uh, several trips and boy oh boy, another crazy, crazy year. Lots of people getting up at the crack of dawn when that availability opens up. There's a five month window for Ontario Parks and People are getting up early and booking fast. Uh, we were a couple of days late getting our mid-June reservation booked and the one particular provincial park it's on my shirt uh, was almost full already. So uh, another crazy year if you prefer, prefer rather, uh, provincial parks over RV parks. Um, yeah, my wife got me this shirt for Christmas, Camp in the Dream, Pinery Park. Um, beautiful shirt, but it is 100% cotton and I put it in the dryer. So it's uh, not very flattering, kind of shows off the moobs a fair bit. So I've either got to buy a better shirt this year or maybe lose some weight and maybe camping and hiking and fishing and swimming will help with some of that. But let's get down to business. Today's video is uh, to give you a little bit of advice, my personal advice, uh, about maintaining your black tank in your RV. I have to preface this by saying this is not a one size fits all piece of advice. This is geared for folks like us who are pretty new to uh, RVing, who have a pretty basic entry-level trailer with a pretty basic black tank setup. Um, and we are also the type of campers that we use the black tank and uh, drain it all in the same trip. We're not full-time RVers. We don't go on month-long trips. Uh, we don't do a lot of back-to-back -back trips where the tank may sit for prolonged periods. We basically will go as weekend warriors. We'll go on a Friday, use the black tank for the whole weekend. We dump on Sunday. When we moved from a pop-up to a travel trailer, the idea of maintaining a black tank really kind of worried me. Uh, I had seen some fantastic videos online by the RV geeks, for example, uh, giving you amazing and detailed uh, directions and instructions and demonstrations of draining black tanks. Uh, and it really impressed upon me that you got to take this seriously. But for the RV geeks, the advice they gave is probably better suited for someone that either has full hookups, so their own sewer hookup and their own uh, fresh water hookup, uh, or people that are full timers that are going to be dumping on a pretty regular basis. The advice I'm giving today is going to be for your weekend warriors and your folks that are only going to be using that black tank until it gets full or close to full and then dumping it uh, right away. So when it comes to the black tank, um, you know, it's a huge convenience to have your own onboard bathroom. Uh, it's a very exciting thing to have when you've had a pop-up camper that had almost no creature comforts, but it is something you want to be respectful of. So there's a few key things that we're going to talk about in the video today, um, and, and the caveat here, or the disclaimer, is we've only used our trailer for one and a half seasons, but we have camped in fall weather where it's been freezing cold, We've camped in extremely hot weather where it's between 90 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit or high 30s, low 40s Celsius. Um, and we've had two adults, um, sometimes three adults and two children using the toilet pretty regularly and filling up that black tank. And I will tell you, we've had no issues with sensors getting gunked up. We've had no issues with blockages of any kind and very little, if any, odor whatsoever, and I'll explain more about that in, the mo in a moment. So the key to success with a black tank, if you have a very basic setup, is RV toilet paper, water, and enzymes or chemicals. So again, RV toilet paper, lots of water, and RV enzymes or chemicals. Let's start off with the toilet paper debate. There are a lot of videos online that talk about RV toilet paper. There's a lot of people that feel it's a ripoff, that you don't need it, that it's a con, it's expensive. Um, a lot of people hate it because it can be very thin. You've got to wipe yourself and your fingers go through it and say no more. It's pretty disgusting. There's also a lot of videos of different RV folks out there taking some sheets of their favorite um, brand of toilet paper, putting it in a, a jar of water and shaking it up. And the idea there is you're testing to see how well does the paper break down. And I've seen those experiments. And yes, in many cases, many of your household brands break down pretty quickly. The surprising thing, though, is that some of your very cheap, cheap economy brands don't break down very well. Uh, this is a brand similar to Charmin. 
uh, and uh, in a jar, if you shake it up, yes, it, it'll break down fairly well, but there's fairly still fairly large chunks of, of fiber. If you use one of the really cheap brands we've bought before, where you can buy like 12 rolls for $4 or $3, I don't know if it's because it's recycled or how it's made, but it almost didn't break down at all. So that's my first piece of advice. If you don't want to buy RV toilet paper because of the expense, don't cheap out on the household brand that you buy, uh, especially if you haven't done a, a, a jar test where you shake it up to see how well it breaks down. Why is this important? Well, every time you wipe your backside and flush this down the toilet, it's going to be sitting in the holding tank. And if this stuff goes all slimy and like a thick paste, it can get all over the level sensors inside the tank that tell you how full your black tank is. And I'm sure you can understand that you want to know at all times how full you, or how empty for that matter, your tank is. So you want to minimize the chance of big globs of this stuff um, sticking inside the black tank. The other thing is you don't want it to block anything. When you hook up the sewer hose at the dump station and you pull the gate valve, you want to make sure that everything's flowing nicely. For us, being weekend warriors, we didn't bother with household. We went for actual RV toilet paper. Now, when we bought our camper, uh, the dealer actually gave us some RV toilet paper. I can't remember what brand it was, but it was very thin. You needed quite a lot of it to get yourself clean, uh, and it just wasn't very nice. I then bought Camco uh, brand toilet paper, RV toilet paper, and it's still not as strong as this. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a lot thicker, it's a lot stronger, it's still pretty soft, and like I said, we've had no blockages, we've had no sensor issues, uh, and that's probably doing 14 trips a season, so uh, a season and a half of camping. So that's my first piece of advice. RV toilet paper is important if you are a first-timer and you're going to be dumping your tank frequently and only staying for a few nights. The second thing uh, that I'm going to add to the list, and I may have got out of order here, but it's going to be chemicals or enzymes. Now this stuff here, I'm not sponsored by these guys by the way, but this is a product by Aquatech called Super Enzo. I don't know if you can see that. Fantastic stuff. Uh, this was also given to us uh, by the folks at Smithville RV when we bought the RV. Uh, this has 650 milliliters of chemical in it and it only just ran out at the end of the season so we got a season and a half out of this entire bottle because you literally only need uh, we have a 20 gallon black tank you only need a, this capful, the small part of the cap and uh, there's lots of different toilet chemicals out there that are some that are blue, there are some that are orange, there are some that are uh, more like a, a preservative that you might get in a, like a porta potty uh, that have formaldehyde and all kinds of other stuff in it um, I'm not an expert on this stuff, I'm not a scientist, but I have heard a lot of people say that, you know, when it has enzymes and bacteria in it, like these do, uh, that it's much better at breaking down the waste and eating up the toilet paper, eating up the solids, and breaking it down. Um, it helps get rid of some of the really uh, horrible smells that you might uh, get. Um, and also, this is eco-friendly, it's biodegradable, uh, and you can use it in your gray tank too. So, uh, Aquatech Super Enzo, highly recommend this. So what we do, on a typical camping trip, when we go camping, um, when we first get to the campsite, one of the first things I do once the trailer is set up, and this is where the other element comes into play, water, I bring this guy. This is our five gallon uh, water jug. Uh, we had this in the pop-up camper because we didn't have onboard water. It's got a nice little spigot. We still use this in the off-season if it's um, early, early, early uh, spring or late fall and it's too cold to use the water system because it might freeze at night. We fill this guy up with five gallons of water. We use it for drinking. But I also fill this up and I will dump the entire contents of this container into the black tank, all five gallons. And I might be thinking, well, that's kind of wasteful, Dan. You know, you've got uh, a 20-gallon tank. You're already filling it with five gallons of water. Well, there's a method to the madness. Uh, one full-time RVer I know who knows a lot more about this stuff than me told me, he said, Dan, think of the key word here being flush. Flush, as in water. And one of the biggest mistakes you can make is not having enough water in the whole process. So this is what we start with. We uh, make sure the pump's off. 
I put my foot on the pedal to open up the valve to the toilet, and I very carefully, because it sloshes everywhere, dump five gallons of water into the toilet tank. Then I add my cap full of super enzyme, um, and then you turn the water pump on and the toilet is ready for use. Now, some of these chemicals are better suited if you're going to leave the stuff in the tank for a little while to give it a chance to break down. But again, camping on a Friday, leaving on a Sunday, or even camping on a Sunday, leaving on a Wednesday, we've never had an issue. Gives us a good, solid base in the bottom of the black tank so that when people start to use it and the human waste, liquid and solid wastes and toilet paper is going into the five gallons of water, it's it's going to help speed up the, the, the process of, of breaking it down. Um, and what that means is there's less chance of stuff getting stuck to the side of the tank, uh, there's less chance of blockages, less chance of crud on the sensors, um, and it means everything uh, rushes out nice and easy. Now, the advice I'm giving you works well for us, mostly, I think, because of how simple our black tank is. So I've got a very crude diagram. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But a very crude diagram of um, how our black tank is set up in our trailer. So here's the toilet right here. And then this is the floor of the trailer. And then underneath it is the black tank. And it is slanted. I know I didn't do a very good job. I'm not an artiste. But the tank is slanted down towards the gate valve. So that as you're flushing and using the toilet, it sort of hits the bottom of the tank. And the majority of the waste will drain down in this direction. Not sure which side the sensors are on. Uh, maybe you would know. Um, but anyway, a very, very basic system. It also has a straight shot. This is where the dump valve is. It is a straight shot out through the gate valve, rather, um, down the sewer hose and into the, the dump station. Some trailers will have black tanks all over the place, and there will be different uh, bends in the pipe, in the, the I think, oh, is it four inch pipe, I think? But the PVC pipe that comes off the tank may have bends in it. It may be on a 45 degree angle. That can complicate matters um, and maybe my advice won't necessarily be the best because you'll notice there's something I'm not mentioning here which is black tank flush that is another big thing that people love to have a black tank flush system and you know what if you've got one in your RV fantastic uh, would it be a deal breaker for us to know because ours doesn't have a black tank flush I was nervous about that I'd seen people you know, buying these wands that you can stick down the toilet, and you hook a hose up to it, and you stick the wand down the toilet. That wouldn't work for us, folks. We live in a condo, a townhouse. We don't have uh, a spot to put the trailer to use a hose. There is no water hookup at provincial park campsites. It's a water spigot and a water fill station. And at many of the dump stations, yes, there's a water hose, doesn't always have a fitting on the end of it. And I've seen many a, a frustrated RVer pull up to those hoses at the dump station and find out, oh, there's no fitting. So they can't hook up a hose and a wand, and their fancy onboard flush system is useless because they can't stick the hose on to actually use the flush. So in our experience, a black tank flush is not really an option for us. Uh, there's aftermarket ones you can buy where you actually cut a hole into the black tank and you put the little spray nozzle in with all the hoses and then that way, uh, and you seal it, you can hook it up to water and it will spray a nozzle inside the tank and, and keep the, the sides of the tank clean. So let's back things up. Because we don't have access to a flush system, and even if we had an onboard black tank flush, uh, it wouldn't work at the provincial parks, we have to use the approach I'm describing to you today, which is using lots of water to try and make sure that as much of that waste is going to move out of the tank as possible. The other thing that we do, and I think this is the, the, the nice finishing touch which really makes a difference, is that when we get to the dump station at the end of a camping trip, uh, we pull the trailer up to the dump station, get my gloves on, go outside, pull out the sewer hose, I, the bayonet fitting, slip it on there. Uh, de definitely recommend wearing gloves, not only because you're dealing with sewage, you know, human waste, but also sometimes those bayonet fittings can be a little snug, um, and sometimes it can be a little tricky to get the cap off of the sewer uh, connection on your trailer. And if you've got some gloves on, I find sometimes a little easier to get a grip. So that's another little tip I'll give you. But you hook up your sewer hose, and the first thing you should always do, and, and any um, experienced RVer will tell you this, is black tank 
first. Do the black tank first, save the gray tank for a second. And so basically we would have pulled the gate valve and as much of that waste that's in the tank as possible would be, would be draining out. Once it's drained out, what I do, and this sort of substitutes for the black tank flush, is I will close the gate valve. I will very quickly go around to the side of the trailer and go in the trailer. Um, I always want to be mindful of the little lineup of other folks that want to dump, so I try to, I try to move pretty quickly. And what I do is I grab our trusty friend, the five-gallon jug, which at this point would have been refilled. I refill it before we leave the campground. And I will once again, with the water pump off, open up the toilet valve and dump another five gallons into the tank. Now the tank at this point should be pretty much empty, but I dump another five gallons in the tank and the hope is, and the theory is, there's a lot of water coming out of there with a certain amount of force. It's going to hit the bottom of the tank, it's going to splash around quite a bit, and then rinse a lot of that crud and gunk down through the valve. It has worked phenomenally well. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys earlier in the video, we've never had an issue with the sensors. We have uh, had almost no odors whatsoever. Um, yes, sometimes when I'm standing there with my foot on the pedal and I'm dumping the five gallons in the tank, there might be a slight, slight odor that comes up, but it doesn't, doesn't knock you off your feet. It's not disgusting. When you come into the camper, you don't really smell the bathroom. When you go into the bathroom to use it, if one of my kids has had a huge dump, then yeah, it's going to smell. But other than that, no. Even on 90 degree days, um, it, there, there's really very little odor. And also, you know, I was very impressed when I actually went to the dump station itself that there was almost no odor. So, just to recap, what we've done is we've gone to the dump station, we've got our full tank, we've opened up the valve, dumped it out, closed the gate valve, I've gone back inside the trailer, another five gallons of water, there's that flush principle dump it into the tank to try and rinse stuff out. Then I go back outside and, and dump the tank again. It doesn't take long because now we're only dumping about five gallons instead of, instead of 20 gallons. And then last but not least, then open up your gray valve. Uh, and the theory there is that the soapy gray water that's come from your shower and your kitchen uh, will run through the sewer hose and clean away a lot of the nastiness that's come out of the black tank. Um, and it will be uh, a little more pleasant when you unhook the sewer hose when you're done. So always dump the black tank first, then the gray tank, but I'm suggesting that you add another little flush phase um, into your black tank. So that's it. That's it. Like I said, nice and simple. Uh, it says on the bottle here for the Super Enzo, it's good for up to 20 plus treatments, which explains why uh, we've been able to use it. This particular bottle retailed at the RV dealer at uh, $24.95. I'm going to go on Amazon and see if I can get uh, some more of this. I do have some of the Camco chemicals, which have pretty good reviews, but I, this stuff is fantastic. I've got plenty of RV toilet paper, and of course, uh, we'll have lots of uh, water supply. So uh, that really about sums it up. Um, I, again, this advice is not one size fits all. Uh, if you are uh, camping for prolonged periods, uh, this may not work too well for you. If you're a full-time RVer, this may be not be the best advice. Um, if you are looking for other advice, like I said, the RV Geeks uh, have some fantastic videos on their channel that go into way more detail. They actually show you dumping out a black tank. Highly recommend that you subscribe to those guys and, and go check it out. Um, a lot of great comments lately on the channel from uh, new RVers and people with travel trailers uh, thanking me for the advice that I provide, so uh, my pleasure, absolutely. Um, don't have a lot of plans for many other videos over the winter. I think the next video I will do is actually going to involve, one second, is going to involve this guy. Got this guy for Christmas. <laughs> this is a, a truck and a fifth. They can tell what it is, Dan. It's a Lego truck and fifth wheel. Um, my, I used to have a, a travel trailer with a car, but my kids got into it and smashed it up and lost the pieces. But this little guy, um, uh, my daughter and I built this. She's seven. We had a great time building it. But I'm going to use this guy in a future video to give you some tips and advice on backing up a trailer. Now there are some slight differences in backing up a, a travel trailer to a fifth wheel. Um, but it, the, the basic principles of what I'm going to discuss in a future video will apply regardless of the trailer. So again, uh, advice really designed to help new-time 
uh, new new time. That doesn't make any sense. Advice to help new RVers uh, enjoying the camping season. Anyway, we'll wrap this video up. Uh, I hope you guys are staying safe and warm over the course of the winter and uh, you're making all your camping plans. We'll talk to you later.